I should repeat it or give an alternative way of strategy of teaching you or ensure that you learn it. So all the formative evaluation, that's why we call no continuous comprehensive evaluation. These days this word is used in school, in higher education, everywhere we are using continuous comprehensive evaluation. So regularly we are evaluating the student, continuous, not one day. We have unit tests, we have so many other types of internal assessments, projects, this and that. This is happening gradually throughout our course of study, not at the end of the year, like earlier days, annual exam used to be there, nothing else in between. Only annual examination, what happens with that? Either you fail or pass. Is there any, uh, you know, chance to improve? No. Now? Now? Because of the formative assessment, every time you are assessed and you are given a feedback. What is the feedback? Where are you standing? In internal assessment, in a project assessment, in a practical exam, something or the other keep happening time and again throughout the year or throughout the semester, you have so many activities to do. So actually in real sense it is not happening in India. The purpose is that every time, time to time, you should see that they learn it. If they don't learn, we have to give them feedback, help them out to learn further. Right? So that gradually they will, incremental learning keeps happening. Not one day, like you write, distance education, you all know. Regular exam, you know. Now regular also has become like distance education. What will you do distance exam? One day batting. One day batting you. Very correct. In one day batting, how much you learn? Hardly you learn. Because they passed you, you passed. Otherwise you would have failed. If at all there is a good evaluator, all the students will fail in distance exam. I am ensuring you. So there what is happening? One day you are learning and vomiting in the exam. Nothing is learnt actually, right? So there is no chance for you, there is no chance for you when there is a terminal assessment that is called summative evaluation. Summation means putting together. So this summative evaluation will not allow or will not give any scope for us to improve or learn. But formative evaluation makes from time to time if you don't know the project, they will make you to learn the project. If you cannot do the activity, they will make you to do the activity. So here it is not a strict kind of an examination, but time to time a project, an activity, an assessment, a field trip documentation, so many tasks we get, right? These are all the child-centric kind of strategies we use, seminar, field experience, brainstorming, lots of methodologies we use, right? So these all methods help them to learn certain things from time to time. So by the end of the semester, you will acquire all the skills, all the knowledge, all the abilities which are required for you. Then terminal examination, that is summative assessment, we will find better performance of the student if we continue with the formative assessment, right? So formative, is it good or no? It is good. It is not, at a time it is happening, it is continuously happening. Throughout the session it is happening. So this is to form, you know, to form the students, character, personality, knowledge, everything you are making them to learn through incremental way. Not at a time, but gradually you are making them to learn different skills, abilities, knowledge, whatever. So, gradually by testing, formative tests in school, you must be knowing what is that called? SM1, SM2, SM3, something they, they use the words, right? So every time, every month, every quarter, every half, early, you know, gradually you are teaching them to learn and finally they become successful, they don't fail. Otherwise what happens? One day back, you <coughs> tend to fail, right? You tend to fail and you will never be able to remember what you have learned. Because pressurized learning and without any space learning, without any knowing what you are learning, if you learn, that learning becomes meaningless, right? So that is summative is the end of examination. Formative is continuous examination. Time to time it happens. It helps you, enables you to equip yourself, right? To perform better and to learn what is not learned by you, right? So like that formative assessment, summative assessment, various assessment procedures are there. Even you know assessment for learning, assessment of learning. You know the difference between these two? In the syllabus it is not given, but if you know it is always better. What is assessment of learning? What is assessment for learning? Now I explain formative and summative. Then you can apply it to this. Just imagine. For learning and of learning. 
Yes? Very good. Very good. Application over now. Application done. You know, assessment for learning is formative. Assessment of learning is summative. Because for learning is, you are making them, why you are assessing them? To make them to learn or to learn. Right? Of is what they know, what they have learnt that you are testing. Right? So like this also sometimes may not come in the exam, but you should have the clarity about the assessment procedures. So like that you have evaluation, summative and formative evaluation. What else is there? So many teaching aids. Why teaching aids are used? Why teaching aids are used? Yeah. Okay, effective. Somebody is saying effective. Somebody is saying easy to understand. Yes? Something else she is Tools? These are the tools and techniques of teaching, right? What are the tools? What are the techniques? Posters. Hmm? Little louder? Posters. Posters, okay. Okay. Charts, posters, models, hmm? all those things you make them to learn. You know, which is more effective? Which type of aid is more effective? There are 2D, there are 3D. Which is more effective? 3D. Why? You can really see them in total. All dimensions you can see, right? All dimensions you can see. Now 3D printing came. Our mythology say, God available in 8D. This is nothing to do with this class. I'm just giving as an information. If you have 8D vision, you can see God. Yes, real. If you can have 8D vision, now all of you got inspired, right? Nothing to do with the class. So always a class should have something beyond the classroom you should teach in the class so that they will go back and continue to learn. So this learning should always be the third type of learning. What is the third type of learning? Reflective learning. What is reflective learning? I did not touch reflective learning. Apply back or what else? See, today you have come to the class, right? Yesterday also you came to the class. Anything you thought after going home about the class, yesterday's class? Yes. What happened after going home? Why did you come again today? Why did you come today again? Yesterday was good, class was good. Then why did you come today? Thinking maybe today also, class would be good. I don't know whether it's good or not today evening you will know after the class. But you know, you will reflect, definitely you will reflect. You know, you go to some hotel, restaurant, you eat food. Right. Next time if it is good, you will go. Otherwise, you will not go to that. You will search for another good restaurant where you will get a good food. So what is that you did? You made a reflection on what has happened. Rechecked it, looked back it. Isn't it? Even the teaching also. Teachers should have that kind of reflective teaching. What is reflective teaching then? You have to look back on what you did. Isn't it? You look back on what you did. The teacher should always have the appraisal of their teaching. What are the gaps in my teaching? Where did I went wrong? Why my learners are not able to learn? These questions teachers always should have in their mind. And every day in and out, they should improve on their teaching. Not, not go down their teaching. Always you should have an improvement from day one to day last. So this is what is happening in the cycle of reflection where a teacher will be appraising, evaluating, and then looking back and taking feedback on her own or his own teaching. So that reflective teacher will make the classrooms more and more better, effective, and fruitful for the students to learn. Right? So that is all happened. So it is parallelly going. Everywhere there is a connection. Could you see? Now you said about teaching aids, 3D is more effective. It could be any type of teaching any type of teaching, even a mediocre teacher, memory level teacher also will use the teaching aids, right? Am I right? Memory level teacher also will use, understanding level also will use, reflective teacher also will use, right? But what is the difference between these teachers are, how should you use these teaching aids? That is more important. If you have full bag of teaching aids, will the class become effective? Now what should you know then? How to use them, how to use them, when to use them, where to use them, why to use them. 
Isn't it? Not just irrational you take teaching aids in the classroom, right? Some of them are very fanciful to use, big bag of teaching aids. But it should be more relevant to the concept and it should really make a difference because of your teaching aid. Otherwise, no use, right? I will put a PPT, whatever is there in this. Now I will put that, you see. So what is the difference? If you put a PPT and read out, will it be effective? It will not be effective. You should add your your original teaching and make it more explanatory, make it more clear to the students. Only then PPT becomes meaningful. Otherwise, I am also using PPT. Mediocre teacher also uses PPT. All types of teachers use PPTs these days, right? But some teacher will read out from the PPT. Some teacher will just show the PPT and explain to you. Some other teacher just keep the PPT for your sake to keep track of the thing and then give something different from what is there in that. Okay? That is only for track to know the scope of the syllabi and make some definitions explicit. You use the PPT. Right? So like that, the teaching aid. PPT is also now a technology integrated teaching aid you are using in the classroom. I always say PPTs are electronic boards. They are like electronic boards where you are recreating the blackboard in, through the technology, right? Is it something very dynamic? It should be more dynamic. It should be more dynamic. Nowadays, we have all interactive PDFs have come. So many new gadgets have come. So many tools have come. So many tools of teaching. So if at all we can use such kind of tools and teaching aids in the classroom, then classroom become very, very live, interactive, effective, and also we can ensure learning, sustain, curiosity, develop, interest, what not. All these things can happen if we put little effort and make our teaching learning more and more enjoyable, learnable and fruitful. Did I communicate? Yes? So then go further. What are the different types of teaching aids? You said 3D is very effective. Now what are the different types of teaching aids that we have? Can you tell me? Because you have already by heart, no? You have not by heart. So you can tell me, no, no, don't worry. If you have by hearted, you are advanced. Today you start conceptualizing, you will never forget it. This time when you read, you will read in a in a different way. Tell me. Can you tell me what are the different types of teaching aids that we have? Anybody? Models are there. What do you call them? 2D, 3D, like that you said, no? Did you classify the teaching aids? How do you classify them? Unidimensional, no? two-dimensional, three-dimensional, like that, de depending upon those dimensions, right? So when you say unidimensional or one dimension, what is one dimensional teaching aid? One example, can you tell me? Yes. They are going to ask such questions when you exam. That's why I'm asking those questions. Planes or charts? Huh? Planes. Plane, charts, something like that. What is seen only one dimension? This blackboard can give you only one dimension. But in the PPT, I can create, I can create different dimensions. I can create a dynamic one in the electronic board. What is that? I can use internet. I can use PowerPoint. I can use various tools of technology and can give you different types of teaching aids through my technology, right? But otherwise, these two dimensions are one dimension or three dimension. This has, this has no depth, but it has breadth and then length and breadth. Two dimensions are there. And when you say three dimensions, this is three dimension. This is three dimension. This is three dimension. I can see all sides. Okay. I can see all sides. Even, not only this, if you have, suppose, I have a brain model. When I open it, there is the provision for me to open it and see inside the brain. So all the parts will be there inside. So the 3D will enable us to see all the dimensions, including the depth, breadth, and the height, all those things. So the three dimensions, if you have, the things will be manipulatable by the student and they will be able to operate them and use them and understand them better than reading from the 2D. You know, you have pictures, you know, picture of a kidney, picture of something, picture of a computer. But live computer if you have before you, you know better computer than seeing a picture of 
computer, right? When the teacher teaches you about some concepts, you know, in the lab or anywhere, whatever concepts, social studies especially, when they talk to you about geography, this and that, it is very difficult. Suppose if you take, the, if they take you to the field and show you all the things, it becomes very, very easy. So that's what we say, concrete to abstract. So you make them to see life, concretize it, then abstraction will become concrete. Unknown will become known, no, right? Difficult will become easy. easy. So like that, the maxims are used by the teacher in the classroom to enable them to simplify the situation, make them to learn effectively and unforgettable kind of joyful learning will happen by involving yourself in the process of learning. You know, even in the teaching age, we say, you know, the life experience, experience-based learning, interactive learning, manipulating learning, all these things when you do, doing, you know, when you are put into the action, yourself doing something, you learn better. I operate, I demonstrate. Lecture come demonstration is one method. Lecture is one method. Let us just handle for some time the methodologies. You know, lecture method, all of you know. What are the advantages of lecture method? What are the benefits of lecture method? You know, just analyze it. I don't need to read from this. See, when I am doing lecture, am I doing lecture? What am I doing here? What is the method I am using here? Huh? What is the method I am using? Anybody? Truly? I am using, yeah, dialogue will be there. Discussion I am doing more than lecture. Lecture means? Put my PPT, I start vomiting from there. Okay, all that I will be reading out, explaining to you with explain, with examples, and none of you will be with me. I am only with me. Okay, I am teaching to myself. Lecture is more, more like monologue. Actually, it should be dialogue, but lecture, what happens? Most of the time, teacher engages themselves in teaching about certain concepts, right? And more so, you will not have time, much time to interact and they'll know how much the students have learned. Hardly we may ask two, three questions, four questions, at the most ten questions throughout the session. Some teachers don't even ask the questions. So basically lecture should also be an interactive one, a dialogue should be there, but generally what happens in lecture method, most of the time teacher will be doing the activity in the classroom. So the disadvantage is that you cannot ensure learning in a lecture method. I cannot. See, I have talked so much for about 30 minutes or so. I don't know how many of you have understood. Right? I don't know. Unless I give some test, I don't know how much you understood. Right? But in the discussion mode, lecture is one method. Discussion? What is discussion? What is discussion method? Why we do discussion? Not only two way, but what is that happening here in the discussion? All of us are participating, isn't it? All of us are participating. Suppose this is the topic about teaching aptitude. Actually, the class should not happen like this. We should ask you to read and come and have discussion. So that, that's why I ask you, ask me some doubts so that I can clarify. It will be a discussion. You know, where you will be presenting your opinions in a discussion, Everybody's opinions are heard and we also appreciate others' opinions. You may have a different opinion about democracy. I may have a different opinion about Indian democracy. Let us all listen to each other. So we develop the ability to listen to others, appreciate others, participate in the group and come out with some consensus. You know, With consensus we go and we try to mutually learn from each other in a discussion. That is the advantage, basic advantage. But in a discussion, if somebody doesn't participate, if doesn't speak anything, then discussion will be, you know, it is going to be waste. Suppose if you call some 10 people to discuss on a topic, if nobody prepare and come for the discussion, like in our classrooms, teachers will tell you tomorrow, flip to the classroom, I have provided you on WhatsApp group, one video, please listen to the video, come back to the class, we all will have discussion. What happens? None of you will read and come back and sit ready for the listening. <laughs> passive listeners you are all, right? We are all passive listeners. We are used to that. Our teachers made us better. So you have to make classroom more live, interactive and really effective. And it should have a purpose, you know. Classroom is not just passive listening, right? So in the discussion mode, you will be able to 
participate, share and express yourself and also develop appreciation and understand others' opinions. So it's a really wonderful method of teaching in the classroom. Today we are calling flipboard classroom, this classroom, all new names have come. But discussion is otherwise the same thing. Those days we did not have WhatsApp videos. We used to have handouts. Teachers used to say, read that and come and discuss. That is discussion. What is demonstration? Lecture come demonstration and demonstration? The two different. Demonstration, lecture come demonstration. What is lecture come demonstration? Yeah. You, you can demonstrate here in the classroom. Only demonstration, where, where do you find? Mostly in the laboratories you find. Though they teach something, but most of the demonstration keeps happening in the laboratories. Okay, you can demonstrate how to fix the computer. You may tell them, but in the practical class, the hardware technician will come and demonstrate how to operate a computer. Still, there will be some lecture, but not effective lecture. It is mostly demonstration. But the teachers will do in the laboratories lecture come demonstration. What happens with lecture come demonstration? Is it superior to lecture? Yes? Why? Whatever they are saying, they are showing you. They are showing you with a concrete application there. When I say uh, start button you push in the computer, big manual used to be there. When we learned computer beginning, we used to have a big manual. Such a boring manual, you know. If you, if you just show them a computer, a small child of two years can learn better computer than you and me. Because they start operating. Isn't it? So, if you give them to operate and learn, these are all learner friendly, right? Even the demonstration, teacher will show and teach. Whatever they are saying, they are showing there in a concrete way or with an example or with a live thing there. So, this makes them to learn more effectively and more, you know, well and conceptually they will be able to remember it for ever. Because in the memory it goes and also you will be able to visualize the thing and remember the things better in this format, right? So lecture come demonstration you have. What are the other methods you have? Can anybody tell me? Teacher-centric methods, student-centric methods, all the methods. Let me just check what is given in your service. Brainstorming you have. Okay, so many methods. So what is brainstorming? What is brainstorming? Anybody? Have you heard this word earlier? Yes, the large group methods, teacher centered method, they have given you lectures. Team teaching, TVR video presentation. Who said I don't know this classification? Anyways, let us learn all the methods, right? So when we say team teaching,